to bring in Colin to talk about this this ultimate customer experience in the UCE. So let's give it up for the man, the one and only, Mr. Colin Austin. Thank you, guys. Um, you know, it's it's funny because I give a similar presentation often. And there's always adjustments throughout throughout years as things progress. And the one thing that I know about the UCE creating the ultimate customer experience is that you can never do it without having without creating an ultimate employee or team member experience. And that's something that I, I admire so much about Brandon because I know that he's always trying to invest into you guys. And um, and the truth is, unless you have happy team members, people who love coming to work and doing what they do every day, you're not going to be able to provide that ultimate customer experience. So I have, this is actually kind of long. so I, I like to drink coffee and get very hyper and just go really fast. <laughs> so like, just bear with the, the speed of some of this. But obviously you guys know... Oh, isn't that working? Oh, I did test it. Started by one of our team members. His name's Lee. He's actually the 67-year-old guy that works works for us, and he's always just referred to like creating this ultimate customer experience. And then it just you know naturally we started calling it the UCE. It was our way of being like you know, UCE, UCE, like in-house, being able to say it to one another and not have a customer necessarily know what it means, right? Um, so my goal really at the conclusion of this is like I want you guys to one be able to come up with a way you can deliver that UCE as a company and then how you can incorporate it daily, you know, as an individual, okay? So I think what would help with this is just giving you a little bit of context as to who I am. So that way you're like, oh, we should actually listen to this guy. This guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> so I'm gonna go really quickly through my story, but I am the COE, like we like to do all these acronyms backwards and everybody, not CEO, but COE, the chief of everything at New Scooters for Less. If you've ever been stuck behind a scooter, it's probably our fault. <laughs> okay, so I, this is a Facebook post that I made a long time ago and I was like, is it considered karma when I get stuck behind the slowest scooter on my way to work? And uh, the answer was a resounding yes, <laughs> it is. Um, and what's funny is that like over the years, people think it's funny to actually pull out their phone and take a picture every time they get stuck behind a scooter and send it to me via text, and which I always reply with my favorite emoji, that one. <laughs> <laughs> and so how did this madness start? So this madness really started going all the way back to an apartment, okay? This is over on 20th Avenue. This place is called University Terrace West. Not sure if it's been renamed, but everybody knows where 20th Avenue is on the west side of campus. For a long time, is it still two lanes? My, yeah, it's is it still two lanes? It's been two lanes forever. So that was my room. This is my roommate's room. That roommate became my girlfriend. That girlfriend became my wife. That's her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have two kids. Now, I don't really bring... The kids have nothing to do with the story except for the fact that they're really cute. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I think... You know, it's, it's funny because one of the favorite stories I like to tell when it comes to, to, to my family is that... Schaefer here, he was born on August 24th of 2009, and if you know anything about August, that's like the busy time for Scooter World. Um, that was actually the first day of school. <laughs> so I, I met him two so, weeks later. Yeah, so, so it was very much like, oh, a baby's coming, peace out team, see you later, <laughs> on the first day of school. And of course, like I go back to my team, I'm like, guys, I'm so sorry, like it'll never happen again, please forgive me, we'll plan better, yada yeah, yada. Yeah. Well, Four years later, <laughs> this guy shows up on August 24th, 2013, exactly four years later. So it's something that my team never lets me live down, and, uh, so I like to show them off a little bit. But this is the bus stop, okay? So outside of that apartment complex was this bus stop. It's actually moved further down now. There used to be a bench there when I went there, but I would go out to this bus stop, and I would just wait for this bus 
which starts at the Oaks Mall, to come all the way down 20th Avenue. It'd pick up all these other people, right? And then by the time it got to me, it had those words full bus across the top. <laughs> so it was one of those frustrating things, like, oh my gosh, like this is incredibly frustrating. I can never get on the bus to go to class. And I went to this thing called Career Showcase. This isn't really me. I just have to fake me. Right <laughs> I'm a student. I taught that kid. That's the little nigger offer. Is it really? I completely robbed this off of Google. I Google like Career Showcase and completely ripped this off. Um, but it's, this was where I realized that I wasn't meant to be dressed in a suit and have that resume in hand and going like doing the corporate thing, right? This was where I was like, oh my gosh, this is not for me because I would meet with these people and they would say, they would say, oh, so, you know, why do you want to work for Harris Company? And I'll be like, <laughs> like... Let me get back to you on that. Uh, the truth was, like, I obviously did it. I didn't see myself working for any of those companies I was meeting with. And and then it was right after that, I mean, it was very much like light bulbs going off, right? I went back to that bus stop. I'm sitting at that bus stop, and, and I'm just like, man, like, this is a problem. Like, I can never get on the bus to go to school. And then I noticed that the University of Florida was building on the only land that they had, which was their parking lots. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is a problem. If I'm a student with this problem, maybe I can help other students with this, right? So that was, and I was like, and it'd be a great way to pick up chicks because, <laughs> because I was like, if I could have a scooter pick up girls, that'd be great. So, I probably shouldn't use the word chick. I don't know. Like, <laughs> so I'm sorry if that. You were looking fly in that picture, though. Yeah, I, mean, it looks, yeah. I guess I can rock that look for sure. Uh, you can, look how excited she is, though. <laughs> so now, today, this is what we've done. You guys obviously live here. When I give this presentation elsewhere, a lot of people don't understand. This is what Gainesville <laughs> has turned into. Okay, like my company has had this kind of impact. And it's super rewarding for us because like we constantly emphasize that we want our goal, our goal, our like our vision is to make Gainesville the scooter capital of the world. And so what that means is that doesn't if you've ever seen like Taiwan or a lot of places overseas, I mean there's literally like millions of these things in the per mile capita, <laughs> right? That's not what I mean. It's it's definitely I want no matter where you're at in the United States, when somebody hears the word scooter. Like, I think right now it's very synonymous with, like, Vespa. When you hear scooter, a lot of people relate it to a Vespa. Like, I want when people hear the word scooter to, like, be like, oh, my gosh, have you heard of Gainesville, Florida? Like, have you have you heard of the University of Florida? Have you seen how many scooters are there? Like, I, that's what I, have you heard of new scooters for less? I want scooter to be synonymous with that. Um, and, and I know that through that and through everything that we do, we're going to be able to provide this kind of impact, right? We're going to be able to coach and teach other people on that ultimate customer experience because that's how we've accomplished it. Now, we, we've made it cool for guys to ride scooters together. <laughs> like, I mean, we're the company that did that, you know? So, <laughs> so, uh, so today we've impacted the culture of an entire community and we are, we are one of the top dealerships in the country. This is a picture of our plaque number one dealer for 2017 Virginia Scooter Company. So, um, and we're, we're right on track to do that again. So how do we do it? How do we continue to do it? And we've and the answer has been the UCE, right? So what we do is we create, this is our number one core value. Now I know Brandon and I go back and forth in our meetings like really really diving deep into core values. This is something that I am extremely passionate about. We have 12 core values that guide our company um, and this is the number one. Like this is the thing that's easiest for us to bring everything to and focus our, our mind around and it's creating that ultimate customer experience. Now, granted, it's a little bit different, right? We're a retail establishment, like we get that. You don't have hundreds of people walking in through your door <laughs> every single day. But I think you're gonna be able to learn and see some of the things that we do. What is that? Um, oh, you got somebody who's <laughs> packing in or something? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I, think, yeah, I, was like, I was like, are you trying to show me something? <laughs> cool, hey, what's up? Uh, so create and recreate that ultimate customer experience. That's our number one, number one core value. So I'm going to give you my four major keys for providing the ultimate customer experience. This is one that, the first is very basic, and that's that the basics matter, right? You guys should know this. Reputation, no, the first impression of our business is never here, right? It's never when they come in through the door. It's always, what, what are they finding online when they, go to your, when they go to your website, when they look you up, Google reviews, that kind of thing. That first impression is so, it's so incredibly important. 
Now, I'm not going to harp and spend a lot of time on this because you guys already know this, but it's just, it's an important thing to keep in the back of our mind that those first impressions are never happening inside of our business. They're always happening outside of our business. Then once they actually come to our business, at least for us on a retail standpoint, the presentation matters, right? We have a very youthful environment. 95% of our customers are students. Okay, so when you walk into our environment, you're, you can tell that. <laughs> We have bean bags everywhere. Actually, right now that's not there. <laughs> we have a podcast table there now. <laughs> um, but this is this was our office for a long time. Um, this is our showroom. This is still set up this way. This way, we have a lot of lights, a lot of bright colors. This is like we have a guest board, so people can sign our wall. Um, this is our waiting area. You come in and get an oil change. Like this is this is it. Uh, this is the, the wall I was talking about. And then this is our this is our service department. So I think it's always important for you know, for it to be very, very clean and present. You guys have a beautiful place here. So if any, any client walks in here, like you've already, you've already nailed this part in my opinion. Uh, but this is also important, like for a service dealership, like that creates the wow factor, right? People walk through these doors right over here. This is a customer, like they can, they're exposed to it and they can actually, and, and as part of creating that UCE, we thought it'd be cool for customers, should they want to, to be able to watch their vehicle being worked on. They can stand up on the other side of this yellow line down here. We've got some stools right down here, and they can actually watch the service being completed should they choose to do so. Mm. Now, point number two is always look at what everyone else is doing and do the opposite, all right? AKA, be unique. I can't tell you how many business owners, if somebody comes to me and they're like, Colin, I'm thinking about starting a restaurant, you know, you know what, uh, what should I do? This is, this is probably the top piece of advice that I give them is go look at all the other restaurants and then go do the opposite. Like what makes it, what's completely different? And, and this, is something, this is something that we do. For example, <clears throat> how many businesses have punch cards when you go somewhere to get a reward, right? It's like, oh, like a rewards card. This caught on really quick. Everybody started doing rewards. Buy nine ice creams, get the 10th one free, right? So we were like, this is cool, but let's do it our way. So we have a price center in our dealership that looks like this. Okay, <laughs> when you walk through these doors, this is our service counter. Now people are like wondering what the heck's going on because they're, they're like, I need to get an oil change. And they see all these toys and all these cool items and stuff up there and they're like, like well, what is this? Well, I mean, we treat it like an arcade. When you get service, we spit out tickets to you at, upon completion of your service. You can also use them towards service as poor college students. A lot of people want to be able to cash them in towards actual cash to use. We do that or you can like cash them in on one of the prizes on the prize wall. It's just really creating just a fun, unique experience for our customers. And like, I know we're the only dealership in the country <laughs> that has a prize wall, right? That's what I mean. We look at what everybody else is doing. Everybody else. Has, and, and we did too, to be honest, for a lot, like we had oils up here, you know, buy oils, buy stuff. And I was like, man, take all this down. Take all the oils down, take all the accessories down. We'll, uh, we'll put some accessories in the showroom, but I don't want this to be the prize wall. I want this to be one of those things that people just, when they see it, they go, whoa. Mm -hmm. That'll be way too late. That's right. <laughs> Which is why the podcast exists. So here's another picture of it. Then we also do swag bags. So this is something that we would do during back to school season. Um, we'll like vendors, other people will give us just swag, pins, keychains, and t-shirts, that kind of thing. We'll put them in these swag bags. And it's just one thing, like when we're selling scooter after scooter after scooter, especially during a very competitive time like August, it's one, it's just extra value that we're giving. It's like, hey, like here's a highlighter from Target Copy and here, I mean just school supplies and different things that we're able to contribute to just give them just a little bit of extra value, a little bit of an extra thank you when they leave. We also like to we have this big bell in the back back here and when we sell a scooter somebody will go and they'll ring the bell and that just kind of signals the whole team to come running to these mats where i have the scooter set up and and we'll just like crowd around the customer doesn't know what's going on <laughs> they're like what's happening right now and we'll just take a giant picture with them and, and just celebrate them we really like to make them feel like it's their birthday when they're buying when they're buying that scooter and getting ready to start start school year um, Balloons is another thing that has happened. Now, this is kind of unique. 
this idea, and I'll explain this in a second, came from something that we executed as a team called the Culture Committee. Okay, now this is a completely voluntary group, and and I'll be honest, we haven't done it in a few months because we've had we've been in transit. Usually at the end of semesters, we're in transition with people graduating and that kind of thing. Um, but this is something that we have done for years, and it's great because we just say, hey team, once a month on this date at this time. You know, we're going to have a voluntary meeting. We don't force anybody to come. But it's a great place for our team to come and just give their input on ways that we can just increase that UCE. What other things can we do to create that ultimate customer experience? And this was an idea that came from a young lady on our team. She was like, look, she's like, we deliver so many scooters on campus and that kind of thing. Why don't we, like, get a helium tank and get balloons and we'll fill the balloons up. Okay, we can all sign them as a team. We can get Sharpie, sign the balloons take that balloon, tuck it down in the seat, and then when we deliver it to campus and they open their seat for the first time, the balloon pops out, it's tied to the back rack, and it has a thank you from all of us. That's so cute. Right? And it came from some, from this culture committee that somebody had mentioned. Now, honestly, at first I was like, I was like, I don't know, that seems kind of cheesy. <laughs> you know, at first I was like, I don't know, but people love it. They love it. It's just like and that extra, that extra thank you. <coughs> And so this is something that I always encourage groups to do, um, especially it, it just kind of helps keep that culture alive. And then as a group, you're always pushing each other to, you know, to take it up just another degree, take it up another degree, which brings me to my next topic, always, always, always take it up a notch, okay? If you're offering great customer service, then you're already so much further beyond everybody else. We live in a world right now where customer service has just really fallen. I mean, you guys know, you go to a restaurant, you sit there for 10 minutes before somebody even comes up to you or, you know, whatever. Like, we're always seeing mediocre customer service. So if you're already offering great customer service, then you're already far, big, you know, so far ahead of everybody else. But there's this, there's this concept, and it's called the 212 degree principle. I'm sure many of you guys have heard of it. But at 211 degrees, you have very, very, very hot water. But at 212 degrees, you have boiling water. That extra degree will create steam. Steam can power a local motive. Right? I love that concept of what can we do? I'm always challenging my team. What can we do to just take it up one more degree? One more degree. One more degree. The balloon idea was one of those things, one more degree. Then we were like, okay, well, how about this? On Valentine's Day, let's go to campus. Let's put balloon. We already have the helium tank. We already have balloons. Let's go to the campus. And every new scooters for less scooter that we find, we know because they all have our logo on the side, we will we'll put a balloon on it with a valentine. And we just say thank you. It's cool because on Valentine's Day, when you go to campus, you see these pods of scooters and they're just balloons everywhere. Mm -hmm. it, from the social media marketing side, <laughs> I mean, it's not the reason we do it, but we also get a lot of exposure because what people taking out their phones, they're Instagramming it, they're Snapchatting it, they're doing a lot of that, that as well, and it gives us that extra exposure. Obviously, we do it as just a way to, you know, up that, that one degree. Um, this is actually, I don't know if this will play, this is actually a video that we made of it. because like I said it kind of leads to that extra I had people messaging me and as well as all the chatter on campus totally make making people's day brilliant 
Um, this was really great because I saw somebody tag us. <laughs> they tagged us. They said, I feel like I'm playing real life Mario Kart, scooting around with this. <laughs> and, then, and then making me feel the love today. Yes, Candy was attached. And like for me, the best part of her posting this on her Instagram story was that our co competitors, Scooter was like right next to it with, with no love. So we got love, no love. And... <laughs> so that brings me to point number four, which is don't be too big for your britches. <laughs> All right. And what I mean by this is I can't tell you how many business owners, because this is what's going to happen, right? You guys are, you're going to grow. The company's going to grow. And what happens with growth, I can't tell you how many, how many people go, man, you know, we used to do this, and then we just weren't able to keep up with it anymore. Like, I actually had a client, and this is a story that I tell a lot. Actually, they said, or not a client, it was a friend of mine who told me, you know, I, we used to make a pie. Every time we signed on a new client, we used to make a pie. And it was like the thing we did, we always give them a pie. And I'm like, that's awesome. Like, why don't you do that anymore? And she was just like, oh, we just got too big. We got too many clients, too many customers. We couldn't keep up. And I'm like, and it's, I'm very much like, you got to figure out a way to continue to deliver the pie. You know, if that's one of those things that makes you special in the early days, like figure out a way to scale it, figure out a process, figure out something in order to scale that. Um, thank you cards. This is something that we do, follow-ups. Thank you gifts for business, you know. To this day, we still handwrite thank you notes to every single customer. We've gone from 300 scooters to 400 scooters, 500 scooters. To, like we're gonna sell over 800 scooters this year, and every single one of them will get a thank you card. So, don't. And, and then again, going back to like the people sharing it on social media and stuff. This is how I find out about it. You know, this person like tagged us and said thanks and this was just took a picture of our thank you card. We also include a little Polaroid of when we took their picture. We had like one of those little tiny Polaroid cameras and that was from the day that they got their scooter we took we took a picture with them. And then like just remain like this is a great way just remaining accessible. I think as me as a business owner, you know, as our company continues to grow, one of the things that I always try to do as the leader in the organization is is stay accessible to my my customers and I do this through snapchat and using social media um, this is my business card <laughs> I meant to bring some for you guys but but that's it and you know it's cool because it's actually led to some pretty neat things for us like we were it was discussed in the Huffington Post blog one day which was pretty neat um, and and this is like some of the results right like letting customers know that hey like you can still reach out to me as the business owner as the leader here um, you know, using it as a way to deliver that UCE, that ultimate customer experience, just providing that customer service through it, um, has just led to more of what makes the company so special, which is the, the word of mouth factor, right? Like, there's nothing greater, there's no better marketing than word of mouth, right? You, you guys all know that. Um, and so we're constantly investing in ways and keeping, keeping what has made it special from the beginning, the customer service, that UCE, continuing to invest into those areas um, in order to keep that word of mouth building the company. So in summary, these are the four things. Remember that the basics matter. You know, think always think about what makes you makes what makes you unique. And that's hard to say. And um, you know, always take it up a notch, that 212 deg degree principle, and then don't be too big for your bridges. Cool. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> yes. Yeah, what, anything from the WHOA GMB podcast in the past few months since you started it? Really cool stories of, of the UCE from some of the people that you guys have been That's a good question. Um, no, I can't think of anything specific. We haven't really had a dive deep episode on customer service yet. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that I know has come up is customer reviews. Um, we dove deep in one episode talking about negative customer reviews. Um, and I'm sure you guys all know this, like, should, should you get one, like, it's important to professionally respond to it, and uh, I think a lot of businesses make the mistake of getting defensive, you know, they get in there and like, no, 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 let me tell you how this really went down, <laughs> and they, like, try to, like, get defensive about it when they're not really thinking about just the next customer reading it and how, how their response is, so, um, 
but nothing specific related to UCE that I can think of that's come up in the podcast yet. It's I still remember early, uh, Jason Hurst, the, he said that the reason that he chose to work with Maple Street Biscuit Company, one but was because the biscuits were freaking amazing, but he also shared that when he was at his first Maple Street Biscuit Company, one of the people who worked there accidentally stepped on his foot. He thought nothing of it, but they made like a huge deal, like, I'm so sorry. And he's like, no problem, about to put a biscuit in my mouth. Don't, don't worry about it. Yeah. And uh, she came back a few minutes later and cash refunded the whole order. So he, she, he, she didn't waste his time. She literally just came, brought him the cash from the whole order and just said sorry for, for that and sent him home with some of the iced pecan biscuits as well. Yeah. It's like, are you serious? Like you stepped on my foot, no big deal. Um, Andrew, that you mentioned before, that I said, shared a Four River story. Um, do you want to share that one? Oh, uh, that happened to us? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I actually wrote about this. This is in um, Business Magazine. That's where it's Somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, like, Lee, the guy who coined the UCE, um, he, he went to Four Rivers shortly after it opened, and he had gotten, like, a half rack of ribs. And one of the managers walked by and was just checking, you know, hey guys, like, just want to check, make sure everything's okay. And he goes, he goes, honestly, I'm not sure that I got what I paid for. And the guy was like, oh, like, what do you mean? Would you like me to take it back? And he had already eaten, like, almost all of it. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, no, it's like, it's fine. Um, and, and just basically left it at that. And, like, and the manager was just like, okay, well. You know, if there's anything I can do, let me know. Well, the manager went back, had an entire rack of ribs made, and then went back to the table and was very much, uh, just said something to, like, you shouldn't have to deal with it, you know, or whatever. Lee had said, oh, like, I'll just deal with it. And he came back, like, you shouldn't have to deal with it and gave him an entire rack of ribs. Um, packaged to go because he knew that Lee <laughs> wasn't about to eat an entire rack after eating a half rack. But um, Four Rivers is known for that. I mean, they're definitely one of those UCE customer uh, companies. Um, in fact, like, I love it when you, when people really make the effort to build relationships within the organizations. That's when you can really do it because, um, especially in there, I haven't been over to Four Rivers in a while, but like in the early days, I was going there all the time. <laughs> and I would walk in, and if I ordered a half rack of ribs, the guy would take the barbecue sauce and write NS4L on top of it. <laughs> You know, like he just because he just knew who I was. Um, so I think when you can make somebody's day by like writing an SRL on with barbecue sauce, like you know that that goes a long way, and that's something that's super super simple that that individual team member took upon himself to do. Um, there's companies that just exemplify this. I mean, I think Zappos is another. Um, they're known for for doing very unique things. There's a story of Rackspace that I heard where this guy got on the phone, was on the phone, just a customer service call, right? Nobody likes to be on an 800 number with anybody for a very long time. This young lady was on the phone call with, with Rackspace, and the guy's trying to work through this problem, this hosting issue, and, and the girl said, the girl just said, oh, my stomach just growled, I'm getting hungry. And then the guy, like, still working through the problem, ordered the girl a pizza. Pizza just shows up and, then, and he, she goes, hey, hey, can you hold on one second? Somebody's at the door. She goes to the door. She says, oh my gosh, there's a pizza. And he goes, yes, I know. I ordered it for you because you said you were hungry. <laughs> Dang. Like, those things really, really just radiate. Um, there's another one with Morton's, the steakhouse. Like a guy, I don't even know who it was, some business guy. I don't, I don't even, might have been an influencer. That could have been why he did it, but, uh, but the story was still was still unique and stood out. I mean, this guy gets on, is getting on one plane somewhere in the nation, tweets oh, at, at Morton Steakhouse, Morton Steakhouse. Oh, oh, I wish I could have Morton Steakhouse when I when I reach so and so destination. He shows up and there's a steak there, like in a to go box waiting for this guy. Um, I like to think all that's authentic. You never really know because I mean, if they, if the guy was a big influencer, maybe they thought he would like tweet about it um but it's still it's still unique i just like that that effort somebody seeing that and going that extra mile um i don't know if you guys have ever watched any of the WestJet videos there's a there's an airline called WestJet, and they they do a really good job of this as well they did a whole thing where there was a big like gift a big present 
with a, with a screen, and you'd go up to it, and there'd be like Santa Claus right there, and the kids would be and like Santa would say, "Hey, what what do you want for Christmas?" And just talk. And this is like in the terminal before they get on their flight, right? And they're like talking to the screen. Oh, like I'd really like, you know, I'd really like a, a TV or I'd really like a computer or Nintendo, whatever. Well, by the time those passengers got to the other end, like when they got to the baggage claim, all these presents started coming out with their name on it and all those gifts were on the other end like three hours <laughs> three hours later so they like hustled and it, it was really really cool uh, there was a major lesson to be learned there which is don't ever ask for underwear if that because <laughs> there was one guy that like got in front of the screen with Santa and asked for underwear and by the time we got to the other end got always asked for the big screen TV <laughs> you know so I thought that was pretty funny but, but I'm always like diving deep into those kind of stories because, um, you know, you don't have to give away big screen TVs, but like maybe it's just barbecue sauce. And, and I, I think there's things that you guys are going to be able to like just kind of reflect on and, and come up with unique ways that you're able to provide that customer experience. So and that's what I would challenge you to do. Think of, think of a way you can do it as a team and think of a way that you can do it as an individual. Any other questions? Anything I can help with? Was this valuable? Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Yeah. Let's give it up. <laughs>